First, I'd like to say we got a prestigious young man here, Coach John Crop. Phenomenal coach, phenomenal man. Um, him and my dad have meant a lot to me in my life. So, appreciate you being here, Coach. Good to see you. You must not have anything else to do this morning. <laughs> All right. What was just your initial reaction watching film yesterday of how the defense performed? Uh, you know, we played hard. It's just really disappointing that we didn't um, get them out there in that last drive they had. Had a couple opportunities um, and uh, a couple opportunities to make some plays and, and didn't quite get it done like we'd like to. But I thought overall they, they played hard. Um, we got some definitely some things to sure up that uh, Arkansas can take advantage of when you watch it on film. But overall, I thought they played extremely hard and gave good effort and uh, um, communicated pretty well together. It seemed like in camp you were concerned a little bit with depth in the secondary. What did you think of those reserves? I thought that they came in and did a good job. Um, we, as you saw, we rotated quite a few guys through there. Um, and uh, I thought that they did a, a good job coming in at different times and, and, and played hard. I thought that they um, competed and I thought they – Tackled uh, pretty well back there for most early in the game. We kind of missed a couple of tackles, but after that, I think they we got it rolling. I thought we tackled um, well back there also. Matt was talking about how he usually feels like you see the biggest jump from week one to week two. Why do you think that is, and where do you think those jumps might be able to come? Well, I, I think the main reason it comes is you played a full speed game, then they watch it on film, um, they understand um, different issues, um, and then they're they, they're more comfortable in the game. I think that's where a big jump comes uh, uh, for you. Um, but also at the same time, now you've put different things on film, so the opponent's going to attack certain things. So um, hopefully you can get those different things corrected or think about how they would try to attack you. Um, but I think this overall just they're comfortable playing and uh, therefore they learn from their mistakes and the little techniques usually um, that they play better um, because you practice them again and now they start, oh, that really does make a difference. That really does make a difference. Mike, can you just kind of broadly assess the challenges you guys are facing with Arkansas from what you've seen? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, um, I like their, uh, their their new quarterback does a good job. He understands the offense to me from watching film from last year and this year. Um, he's making more checks. He's getting them in the right play. Looks like he's going with the ball quicker to the correct receiver like uh, Chad would want. Um, that's what I've noticed there. Um, you know, number five, the running back is an excellent, excellent player. Powerful, fast. Um, they run the stretch play really, really well. Um, they didn't run that as much last year, but it looks like to me their line's in sync. The running back gets them running and cuts up field. Um, he's doing a good job there. They didn't play their, their, their excellent tight end, um, number 85 from last year, did not play in the first game. And so uh, he was coming off an injury. Um, but I think he'll be ready. I saw him on shorts kind of walking around on the sidelines, and, you know, he's an excellent weapon for them. Um, and then their receivers, their big receivers, their young receivers they had last year, number eight, um, made some plays. Number seven and 16, the freshman receivers are long and athletic. Um, they look like they can stretch the field and do some different things there. So um, that's kind of what I'm seeing on, on film with them. They had a couple plays. They just missed in the Portland game, or they would have had a good another 21 points or so. Um, so I think that they feel like they have ability to maybe stretch the field a little bit more. You touched on this a little bit, but across the board, what did you think of tackling in the opener? Well, I, I thought at the beginning of the game, we missed a couple of tackles early. Um, but we were the, – the, the great thing about it was one guy missed it, but there was three or four other guys there. Um, and so they were swarming to the football. But I thought after that we tackled um, – I thought we tackled well um, as far as, to me, improvement-wise. Um, and we've got to keep doing that. We, we, we do it every day. We'll, we'll tackle every day. Not every day are we able to go to the ground. But if we don't go to the ground, we're going to take a dummy to the ground. We're going to take a, a pad to the ground. So um, they understand that, and, and uh, we work at it every, every single day. Coach, last year assignment busts were kind of a common theme. How, were they assignment sound against Memphis in your in your mind? Yeah, we were uh, we were assignment sound. We might not have been per picture perfect assignment sound. We were in the right area. Um, there wasn't um, a lot of bust. Um, uh, there was a couple times that uh, you know we kind of got lined up late. A couple of those were my fault. A couple of them were our guys' fault. Um, kind of seeing different things. 
Um, but I thought overall, um, no, we were in the, the right area. Um, now we've got to be a little bit better in our technique when we get to that area. And those are the type of things I think you help improve as game to game. But overall, the young men, I thought, did a good job of trying to do what we're definitely coaching them to do. Luke Knox was a guy we didn't really talk about much throughout camp, but he was on the field pretty early in the game, played a good bit, and looked like he played pretty well. What's your evaluation of him? Yeah, Luke camp? had an excellent spring, and then Luke hurt his hamstring right at the end of our summer workouts, and it wasn't quite healed, so he missed the first two weeks of camp. That's why you didn't hear anybody talking about him. So the last week and a half, he's been practicing, and he's athletic, he can run, um, he uh, understands the game out there, he's gotten bigger. Um, I think Luke's going to be a really, really good player with, you know, him and Sam out there on the edge. They're big, athletic, can run, you know, can tackle. As you saw them, they can tackle receivers in space. They can tackle running backs in space. Um, and they're big and athletic. So, I, you know, Luke needs to hope he keeps coming on because um, we're going to need him to. And I feel like he's definitely talented enough to be an excellent outside linebacker. The past couple of years, Ole Miss and Arkansas always seemed to play close. There was also that seven overtime game that yeah, you were a part that of. Yeah, I was a part of. Yeah. What is it about these two teams that they seem to play so close against one another? I, I, I guess it's just a, a, a way it's put in the cards. That um, it's always been uh, good football games and exciting games. Uh, and this one won't be won't be any different. They're you know they're they're a good football team that's powerful up front and. Uh, you know, there are multiple tight end sets. They'll they'll try to do that um, just like Memphis did against us. Some. Coach, like, you said that you were going to see how it went in the booth this past week. How did it go up in the booth in the press box? And yeah, I, I, I um, up there. no, I'll, I'm going to definitely stay up in the booth. There's no doubt about it. You can see better. Um, our staff did a great job of us communicating stuff during the game and getting it to our kids. Uh, I didn't think like there there was any issues on that. Our have an excellent staff, and uh, I can see better up there. Um, I can stay, quote, calmer, being able to think and look at things. You don't get caught up in the emotions of it. You're not worried about telling a kid what to do. Somebody else is while you're watching. If a play happens, you can see what they're trying to do next quickly. You can see them getting lined up, so therefore I can make a call to help us out. And when you're in the sidelines, you can't really see that as much. You, you really can't. Um, and so uh, I think I'm going to definitely stay up there and, and, and do that. Plus, it's a little cooler up there. It's a little cooler. Were you pleased with what you got from Julius at free safety? And did he have a lot of slot corner coverage responsibilities in that one? Yeah, um, J2 did well. Uh, you know, for his first time playing a lot of safety, I thought he did well. I thought he covered well. I thought he made some plays. He came up and was, you know, striking guys. Um, and and J2 is a big part of what we do because he's able to cover. Um, and uh, that was a big part of, uh, part of the things in the game. I thought, I thought Armani came in and did some good things, too. He made some good plays. Um, so I, w I was pleased with those guys. Coach, from an overall sense with the 3-4, you came in, you felt like you know, this would be better for the existing personnel. Small sample size, but uh, do, you, do you have some degree of confirmation now, and do you think you've got a pretty good buy-in? Yeah, the I do. I, I, the thing that I was, you know, um, we've been able to do, but you don't do it full speed all the time. And people are going to keep testing us, and they should, was being able to tackle the receivers in space, being able to tackle the running backs out in space. As, you know, Arkansas will do it, everybody do it. They're going to try to block Sam and throw it out there and see if he can get off and make a tackle on the back, and he has. And I mean, he's going to miss one every once in a while. Those guys are, but they're athletic enough, they're rangy enough um, to, to be able to do that. Um, so I think that, that that's, uh, I thought, that in the first sample that – um, it was able to hold up and do well. And it's hard for those little guys to block. Now, people will start putting tight ends out there to block them, um, which, which, will, which will be fine. Our guy, they're, you know, they're 255 pounds and they're big and athletic, but then that doesn't threaten us as much on the safeties with verticality either. Um, even though Arkansas's tight end can kind of do both, he's, he's kind of a freak. You got a lot out of the nose tackles this past weekend. Have you got a sense from those guys that – Maybe they're kind of excited about the fact that there's one of them on the field at a time. They're fresher and you kind of get more out of each of them. Individually. Yeah, they rotated in well. Um, I thought that they all did some good things um, for us. And, you know, we were moving them a little bit, too, to help them free up uh, to, to, to make some plays. Uh, you know, we're going to have to keep rotating those guys. You know, if anybody's ever wrestled before, it wears you out. And they're having to sprint to the ball every play. Offensive linemen, they go to the ball, but they don't have to sprint to the ball every single play. So if you're having to wrestle 
and then go sprint 20 yards and wrestle and then go sprint 20 yards. You get worn out. So that's why you have to rotate in D linemen more. But I definitely feel like they they understand that. I don't think any of them are like crud. I think they understand the whole concept. And if they're in there fresher, they can make more plays. And when they're not fresh, another guy comes in and here we go. So I think they've bought into that pretty well.